J.D. Huh? Honey, are you afraid of me? <laughs> no, ma'am, of course not. Uh, now, over there, uh, that's the smokehouse. Here, right? Uh, you can just see the smoke there coming out of the smokehouse. Well, if you're not afraid of me, then why did you look at me when you talked to me? Well, I was looking at the smokehouse. It's JD, right over, right over there. Turn around and look at me. Yes, ma'am. Now that's better. You know, I um, I like what you said in there. I mean, about uh, being willing to fight the Englishman over me. It was a real nice thing to say. Well, I don't think fellas ought to go around kissing girls. When, well, I mean, if they're not. You know, sometimes a girl doesn't mind being kissed. Well, if you liked it, that's, that's your business. But those flashy guys always seem to fool the women, but he don't fool me. I wasn't talking about him, J.D., but at least he wasn't afraid. Who do you think I am? I'm willing to try and find out. Well, I may not be as fancy as that big bag of wind, but I ain't afraid of anything, including him. I bet you're afraid to kiss a girl. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Well, are you? No, I'm not. I mean, when I find a girl I want to kiss, she's going to get good and kissed. No, I'll, I'll get the buggy. Uh, I guess Pa was right. J.D. is in love with her. How do you know? Oh, if he wasn't, he would have kissed her. Joe, that don't make sense. Well, of course, I know you're older than I am, but there's certain things I've had a little more experience in than you have. And this just happens to be one of them. Yeah. I bet you he kisses her on the way home. Ah. Oh, yeah, he'll, he'll try to kiss her. She's not going to let him. Dad, Bernie, Joe, that just don't make sense. Duke. One does not address a duke as mister, now does one? Well, I'm not anxious to address you in any way, shape, or form. I just want to warn you that as About a... what? I am perfectly capable of taking care of myself. Constable. Now, we don't address a sheriff as a constable now, do we? I just want to point out that as a professional fighter, if you use your fists on anyone, I'm going to jail you for assault with a deadly weapon. Oh, then, in the event that I am attacked, I will not even be allowed to defend myself. Now, you know better than that. Besides, I have a feeling that nobody around here is going to be foolish enough to try a thing like that. So I suggest you just move on your way. Is there anything else before you leave? I think that'll be enough. Still waiting, eh, Bobo? Maybe she ain't coming home tonight. Oh. Now you're giving me the silent treatment. First you knock me about, then you act as if I wasn't here. Well, I am here, Bobo, and you know I'm here. And when you need me, I'll be working late in my office. In other words, in the pub. I, I, I don't know what what came over me. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm sorry it happened. It's all right, Mr. Lambert. It's forgotten. But look, look, I I don't blame you for slapping me. I, I had it coming, but, well, you look so, so pretty there with the moonlight in your hair. I just all of a sudden had to kiss you, Marge. I, I'm, you I'm, clumsy fool. You stupid oaf. How dare you even address this lady? Come on, J.D. Come on. Scum, you coward, you yellow belly. How very brave you are, with a gun pointed at someone who is completely unarmed. Your bravery overwhelms me to such a point that I can no longer tolerate the sight of you.
Well, come, my good fellow. Are you not going to pull the trigger? J.D., don't, don't get mixed up with him. Go on home. Fair fight! Surely you have a better man in Virginia City. And if you haven't, well, I suggest you send for one. Because the champion here expects to have a fight in this fair town of yours. Somebody get a doctor. He's hurt bad. Hank, you and Mike take him over to the dock, will you? So you found one, eh? After I told you the law. Well, you're going to the calaboose. Oh, no, he ain't. The Yank hit him first. Every bloke here saw it. Is that right, Joe? Yeah, that's right. J.D. hit him first. You had better get these laundered. No hard feelings, Sheriff. Come on in, I'll buy you a drink. I'm sorry, you couldn't have seen me up against a more worthy opponent. One could hardly call it a fight, could one? Of course, I could uh, tell from the outset that you were a woman who uh, needed a man, not a boy. Well, now you've found one. The doctor said he never saw so much damage done by a man's fist. And you know the funny thing? The boys that saw it said it looked like he was just tapping him. I'll tell you something else, too. J.D. ain't the easiest man in the world to take. I've seen him take three miners one night in Virginia City single-handed. Roy, what started it? Well, from what I understand, it was that girl Marge. The man's a professional. He ought to be jailed. But J.D. took the first swing. Well, it was good of that very nice girl to let him get his head knocked off on her behalf. I don't care if J.D. did swing first. I'll guarantee you he didn't start it. Come on, Joe. Now you boys stay right where you are. Stay right here. Look at J.D. Just look at him. You want us to stand here and do nothing? That's exactly what I want you to do. Stand there and do nothing. You can't gun down a man for, for defending himself. Now, J.D. was warned. He was warned. That's my... my fault, Mr. Cartwright. Don't nobody tackle him. It's my fault. I know he's gonna do that to a friend of ours. I agree with Joe, Paul. I don't care who you agree with. You're staying out of it. Oh, Marge. Oh, Marge saw it. She, she saw me make a fool of myself. I, I could never see her again. Paul, I can hurt that man. No. I can get one hand on him. Paul, I, I get... said no. Paul, they say he strikes faster than a rattlesnake. Yeah, well, you just wait till I get my hands on him. Just a point. He won't hold still long enough. Yeah, well, if us can't catch him, the two of us can. Just be quiet and listen to me. Now, first, as I said, J.D. was warned not to mix with the Duke. Second, I've seen professional fighters at work. When I was young, and that wasn't so long ago, I thought I was pretty good, too. Well, one of them showed me how good I was. That's when this was broken for the first time. I couldn't think straight for a week. But, Pa, I'm bigger than you. You may be bigger than I am, but you're no tougher than I was in those days. A man just wasn't designed to be beaten up the way a prize fighter can do it. There's another way, and a better way. Yeah, like what? If he's so anxious to have a fight, we'll get him another professional prize fighter to fight with. Oh, there ain't no professional prize fighters around here nowhere. No, but I know where there is one. I'll send a wire to Adam in San Francisco. There's a fighter there, a great fighter, Heenan, the Benicio boy. We'll pay him to get here as fast as he can. Roy? Yeah? If I ride out the wire, will you take it into town? I'll take it to San Francisco myself if I have to. Still like to get my hands on that Duke. Did you hear that, J.D.? I'm gonna get that Venetia boy to take care of the Duke. Yeah, he's a real champ, J.D. He'll take care of that Duke. Marge saw it. 
Marge's... Marge saw him make a fool of me. He ain't hearing nothing we're saying. I'd still like to get my hands on that duke. Now I'm gonna have to do what Pa said. Of course, that don't mean we can't ride into town tomorrow and sort of break the news about the Benicia boy. I'd kind of like to see the look on the Duke's face when we tell him that. Yeah. I'd sort of like to see that Duke fella myself. Hey, wait a minute. I said we're going to break the news to him, not his neck. Agreed? Agreed, little brother. 